Okay, so today we're going to move on to the knee exam. So you've already finished your history. You have a good idea of key things that you want to evaluate and look into. Remember, if it's a knee pathology, you're also going to want to evaluate the hip a little bit and down into the ankle. But for the purpose of time, we're just going to focus on the knee exam specifically. So how do we start? History is done. I can still ask questions even though I finished the official history of new information presents. We're going to go on to inspection. So a couple of key things for inspection. Today our patient isn't wearing quite the right kind of pants. Normally you'd have the person in shorts so you could physically see the skin. And you're looking for things like swelling. You're going to compare bilaterally. And I would have you verbalize that. Swelling, any tenderness, which brings up a really good point. Before you actually make contact with the patient, you want to make sure to give a good introductory statement. So I'm going to be doing a hands-on assessment. If anything is painful or uncomfortable, please let me know right away. And don't let me do anything you think will cause you further injury. Okay. And what I would do is, you know, this person's probably coming to see you because they are injured, so you want to assess them in the most relaxed position that they can be in, making sure that they're comfortable. And she looks fairly comfortable right here. Yeah. One thing I'll do, Amber, is I'm going to slide even just a little bit more forward. I just wanted to have better access to the back of the knee a little bit higher up, which you sitting right there. So basic palpation, if this was the injured side, I would start with the unaffected side. It is crucial that you start with the unaffected side. You do not want your first contact with the patient to be painful, okay? So that's the injured side, so I'd start with the unaffected side. I'm just going to get a baseline here, checking out, basically giving an anatomy lesson while I'm inspecting and palpating at the same time. Another key thing that you want to watch for as well is junior practitioners, they just focus on what they're palpating. They forget to look up and realize there's a patient attached to what you're palpating. So I'm checking out the Achilles tendon, moving into the infrapatellar fat pad along the meniscus and joint line all the way through here, medial lateral collateral ligaments. At the back, I can feel a popliteal pulse, sciatic nerve runs through the middle. I'm basically just giving an anatomy lesson of all the structures that I should know. I'm just getting a baseline to see what the tissue feels like, how it moves, and if there's any tenderness. Okay? A little bit of tightness over the iliotibial band, that's pretty standard for this patient. Okay? Then you would go ahead and repeat on the opposite side. I don't know if there's anything else you'd like to add to that number? Or? Just that it's not an Achilles tendon. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. You make a mistake, of course. The uh, infrapatellar tendon or quadriceps tendon is what I meant to say rather than the Achilles tendon. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Super good. Okay, so that's going to be your initial inspection and palpation. Remember, you should be able to give a list of all the structures below your hand. The deep structures you can't physically reach with palpation, you reach indirectly with your special orthopedic tests later on. Inspection, palpation, you could also go into motion from this point. Knee range of motion is relatively simple. So the first thing I'm going to do is have the patient go ahead and stand up. And go ahead and face me if you could for just one sec. So if you have any pain or discomfort, let me know right away. We're going to have you do some range of motion and we want you to move as far as possible. One of the key things here that's great with the table or a wall beside you is that if she does have any instability or balance issues, she can go ahead and hang onto the side of that table. So from this position, it's like you bend one knee up and then go ahead and straighten it all the way out. And let's go ahead and repeat on the opposite side. One knee comes up and then all the way back down. All right, and then we'll go ahead and sit back down. That'll be flexion and extension super quick. The next thing is rotation. Now rotation of the knee can only really happen with the knee flexed, all right? The collateral ligaments and cruciate ligaments are in a loose packed position here, so you can do rotation. So if I can, I'll have you turn your feet out and then turn your feet back in. The main thing I'm looking for here is the tibial tuberosity and any pain or discomfort the patient might have. So that's going to be active range of motion, good baseline to start with, then you're going to move into passive range of motion. For a lot of patients, you probably wouldn't even go into passive range of motion, but the reason you're doing this exam is because they probably have a knee pathology, therefore passive range of motion would be indicated. The easiest way that i found to do passive range of motion is to have the patient lay down. So how do you go ahead and lay down on the back? <coughs> so when she lays down, again, we're going to check the unaffected side first. What is our passive range of motion? Passive range of motion is all the way up. You'll notice how I even lifted the patient's leg. I supported underneath the knee like this to bring them all the way up. And you take them all the way to flexion and then give a little bit of overpressure. And there was a little cavitation, a little click right there that I felt as I just moved into that position. You could hear it, but it's important to have your hand over top just to see Maybe if that was a snapping tendon or was it actually a cavitation from inside the joint. All right, back down, supporting the underside of the joint. Take her all the way down and watch this one, especially for soccer players, which she does play. How's that? Just feels like a stretch? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So all the way into extension. And then you can check your rotational movements. If I'm going to do internal rotation, I can turn the foot in like this and then go ahead and rotate, almost like an anterior drawer, but not quite, because I'm spinning the knee and looking for a full end range there. And then external rotation, the same thing and then turning the leg out. Next, you move into muscle testing after the passive range of motion. There's a couple of ways that you can do this. You can have the patient sitting on the edge of the table and move them into flexion and extension. Or another way you can use it to get a little bit more body weight into it is even do it with them in a supine position so they don't have to change position again. Okay? So from this position, what I'm going to do is try and push your knee down like that. Don't let me do it. Okay? So hold it. 
I'll take my body weight over top, and she's strong, so I know that I'm gonna have to push with a lot of force, hold, hold, and go ahead and relax, okay? So that's gonna be checking mainly quads, the, flex, the extensors of the knee. From this position, I'm gonna go ahead and lift up. So when I lift from this position right here, there's a couple of things that might happen. The first thing is, let's just do it the correct way first. So I'm gonna try and lift you up this way, don't let me do it, okay? So hold, 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 and relax. What I'm using is actually my leg strength. I'm putting her, her shin, her ankle right next to the side of my hip. I'm lifting with my legs as I do that, as opposed to try and lift with just my arms. I would not physically be strong enough to do that against the strength of her leg muscles, okay? And the smaller practitioner you are and the bigger your patient, the bigger the differences in body size, the tougher it gets, all right? But the way to do this wrong though is if I just tried to lift like this. So I'm just gonna try and lift you like that without trying to anchor this knee down. And what's gonna happen is her butt's gonna lift off the table. So she lifts up and you can just see it lifts her right up. So I actually don't get a good muscle test that way. Other option would be if the patient's sitting down, but that's a sim more simple variation. So that gets you through resisted range of motion. Realize, yes, that checks the muscles, but it is also part of your neurologic exam, which gets us into the next portion of hip nerves, which is going to be the neurovascular screen. So Amber will get you sitting back up. Any of the stuff that we're going to do could also have been done in a supine position or yeah, in a supine position if you didn't want to change positions. So key things for your neurologic portion of the neurovascular screen are going to include deep tendon reflexes. So what are our DTRs? L4 for the patellar tendon, okay? <laughs> L5 for this medial hamstring and S1 for the Achilles tendon. And there's lots of different resources and videos you can see on our website that have demonstrations on how to perform that and with pathologies. So that's one option you have. The next option you have is going to be sensation over the dermatomes. And so what are my dermatomes? Dermatomes are basically L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, S1. Okay, as you come down. What you want to do when you give the actual instructions for this is the patient's going to close their eyes, we're going to compare bilaterally, and let me know if it feels the same or different. We're not going to bother to do that, but that's what you would do. If you really had an index of suspicion of lack of sensation somewhere, you would take some time to map it out. It might even switch to sharp dome. So you've got muscle control, you've got sensation, you've got deep tendon reflexes. You could potentially measure the size of the, of the uh, limbs to look for atrophy if it was there. That's gonna be a longer standing neurologic issue. For the vascular portion of the exam, the key thing here is gonna be pulses. So I can check that posterior tibial pulse behind the medial malleolus, dorsal tibial pulse, or tibialis post, no, dorsal tibial pulse right here, okay? No, dorsal pedis pulse, all right? <laughs> Dorsal pedis pulse right there, popliteal pulse, and potentially even a femoral pulse up here. You couldn't really do it seated though, it's better if the patient's lying down, so that's your option. Other thing you can look at is if the patient doesn't have a nail polish on, you can go ahead and blanch the nail beds and look for capillary refill there. But even just a general check of the temperature of the feet, of the limbs, if I squeeze, if you squeeze the skin where you can see it and let it go, you can actually see the capillary beds refill as you do that. So that's gonna be an excellent way to assess vascular function. Anything else you wanna add for those ones? Okay. All right, and then the last portion is gonna be referred pain. So things that can refer to the knee that are not knee pathologies, not overly common, but you can have referral from the radiculopathies of the lumbar spine. One thing that you can see in kids though, even with things like slip capital femoral epiphysis or something like that, hip pathologies can refer down to the knee. There's a common innervation of the articular capsules of the hip and the knee through the obturator nerve and a little bit through the femoral nerve that can trick the nervous system a little bit. You could also potentially have visceral referral patterns. They usually don't go down to the knee. Things like kidneys or a kidney stone could refer down here and potentially into the groin. I mean, it'd be pretty rare, but you could also have things like, uh, what would I say here? Like a herniation, like an umbilical or femoral hernia, but really that's gonna be higher up. But there's always the possibility for it, okay? Femoral nerve entrapment, lateral femoral cutaneous nerve entrapment could be involved as well, but you know, that's, the knee is pretty specific for where you get the pain. And then special tests, you're gonna pick your special tests based on the conditions you're trying to rule in or rule out with that pathology. And that would conclude my basics for a knee exam. Anything you wanna add? No, that's no? okay. Okay, all right, well thank you very much and hopefully you enjoy examining some knees.